procedure for conducting business is the petitioner for each item will ask to come forward, state your name for the record, and present his or her request. Please adjust the microphone on the podium so that the recorder will pick up your voice. Anyone wishing to speak to the... The board will then ask any questions they may have. Then anyone wishing to speak to the proposal will be asked to come forward and voice their opinions. If there are opposing sides, each side will have 10 minutes to speak. I will remind you that we are here to talk about the particular item on the agenda. No matter how much your neighbor's dog has barked and annoyed you, that is not a purview for this commission and will avoid those kinds of discussions about extraneous items. Uh, if extraneous conversation continues, I will uh, use my gavel and say that you're out of order. If it continues, you'll be removed from the meeting. We've not ever had to do this, but I'm ready. <laughs> All comments about the pro project should be on the project presented. This is not an avenue for personal grievances. If you hear the gavel, you are out of order, and if you persist, you'll be removed from the meeting. Once your request is heard and the board's decision is rendered, you may leave the meeting. However, if you have questions for staff, please wait until after the meeting is over to ask them, or you may contact the staff at, your, at the office the following day. Once public testimony and discussion for a particular item is concluded, the members of the board will deliberate and render a decision. Members with a personal or financial interest in any request are required to recuse themselves from voting. All discussions by the Architecture Review Board are final. Any person having a request for a certificate of appropriateness denied by the board may appeal such denial to the Montgomery Circuit Court. Any such appeal may also be fired with the Circuit Court within 30 days in receipt of the final notice of the board. We have almost a full complement of people present today. It takes five quick votes to pass a motion. Because of the number of members present, if you'd like to delay your request, please let us know at the time your request is announced. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce the members of the Architectural Review Board. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Brown, Jake Johnson, uh, Barry Robinson, not here, not here. Uh, John Hayden, John Foshi, Hillary Morgan, Katie Williams, and Kalia Bell. All right. Our land use staff are Christy Anderson and Russell Stringer. And is Mr. Tyson here? He's in the back. All right. Thank you for coming tonight, sir. Okay, we have, what, six members or seven members? Seven. Seven. So that, it probably shouldn't be a problem to get uh, five votes for your project. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I take that back. Don't jinx it. You, ha you, have, as, you have a better, as good a, a, a chance as usual for getting enough votes for your project. Uh, first project on the agenda is... Mr. Durr and Cottage Hill on Henrick Street, please come forward and tell us about your driveway. Good evening. Thank My you. name is Orlando Durr. Can I uh, approach the bench and give you guys some extra pictures? Sure. We, we know how to pass things here. Yeah. Hopefully everybody has a copy. Uh, again, I'm Orlando Durr with the Durr Development Company. Uh, we're proposing to put a driveway in on uh, 125 Hanrich Street. Uh, most of the properties there are, are being renovated. Some don't have driveways and some do. Uh, some people are driving up on the grass, which really looks bad. So what I'm trying to do is, is alleviate that issue. Uh, we're looking at doing a paved driveway in that little uh, little section of the house. Uh, that house is a 
800 or so square foot house that we're renovating. And if you can look to either side, there, there's no uh, spot in the back of it for any kind of parking. And in front of it, there's a, a small oak tree, uh, which is encumbered of our driveway proposal. Uh, the oak tree there is going to be about nine inches wide, which the little section between the, the sidewalk and the curb is only two feet wide. So in a matter of years, it's going to end up breaking up the sidewalk anyway. It's going to be removed. So I'm proposing to remove the tree and also put a, a, either a paved driveway in or a concrete driveway. Is there anyone in the audience to speak to this project? All right. Discussion from the board. Mr. Durr, the urban forester, has recommended a tree replacement. I think you said something about windmill palms. There is a, around that neighborhood in Cottage Hills, there are several properties that have uh, windmill palms or Sega palms in the area really makes it look re really nice in there. And what we're, we're proposing is to put either, not particularly in that front spot, but on the property in the front, we're gonna put some palm trees and some Sega palms and make it really look nice over there. Are there, Mr. Stringer, are there other palm trees in the area? I I'm not familiar with this particular neighborhood. Uh, I'm not opposed to palm trees on this property, but I am opposed to replacing a tree with a palm, because palm, even though we put tree on the end of the word palm, not a tree. It's more closely related to grass. It's a landscape plant. <laughs> you said it's related to grass? Okay. Uh, well, these one I'm talking about are about eight to nine feet, but I'm not talking about putting it in a, that front little curve, that little two-foot yeah. little section. I'm referring to putting a tree inside the, the front of the the property on either side of the porch. The the tree in question is a city tree. Uh, if he gets approval from y'all for the driveway, uh, gets approval for the curb cut, if everything meets the approval, he will have to pay me a mitigation rate to cover the the um, value of that tree. So that's that that's not going to be an issue here. Okay. Right. Very good. Mr. Durr, I noticed there's an existing curb cut on, if you're looking at the front of the house on the right side of the property, that you can park on the right side of the property as well. Do you plan to utilize that as a parking pad as well? Well, the, w the way it's situated on that, that block, the first house, I think it's 127 Hanrick Street, mm -hmm. that's really set up for that gentleman's, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dane, sure. his property. And the way it's situated on the left of each property, there's a sequential driveway, or in theory, it's supposed to be a driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, we weren't going to use that little piece on the right because okay. I was going to just try to have our own little driveway so we don't try to, you know, I don't want any argument there if somebody's denting doors or what have right. you. So I, I was trying to put ours to the left just like his is to the left. Right. Okay. okay. So I'm sorry, Mr. Dirt. Facing the house from the street, you're going to put the driveway on the left side? Facing the house is going on the left side. If, I don't know who's, can you? Push back on that so you guys can see that. Can you scroll back one or two? It's a great big If you look at that one, there's we put a sidewalk in right there, but to the left of that sidewalk, we're proposing to put a, a either a cobblestone or, or a concrete driveway right there on the left side. The right side is predominantly set up for 127 Henry. And if we moved it over anymore to have them drive up, they'll be driving right up to the porch and it'll, it'll start running to cars hanging over the sidewalk. So we're trying to make sure we don't have that issue of people blocking the sidewalk when they drive up. That is rude, isn't it? It is. Well, you know, we have a lot of people walking dogs yes. and, and riding bikes, so I, I didn't want to put that driveway right there to the right and, and have somebody with a longer car or truck hanging over the, the sidewalk. All right, any further discussion? Are we ready for a proposal? Oh, is there anyone from the neighborhood here? There is no one here. It's not Darby. 
All right, uh, a motion, please. Move to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Go in. Thank you. Do Have a good day. Way. Congratulations on your hard work here. This is a nice street. All right, Jim Yeaman, 1309 South McDonough Street. If I'd stayed where I was, you would be my across the street neighbor. I beg your pardon? I said if I'd stayed where I was, I'd be your across the street Well, neighbor. I'm about to be across the neighbor there tomorrow. I'm moving into that house tomorrow. I Good. currently am the That's a nice house. Uh, innkeeper of the Lattice Inn, which has been without business since March of 2020. Yeah. And it's been a real struggle. And I'm to try to get sanity back to my life. I'm moving to this house, which is my rental property that adjoins one corner of the Lattice Inn property. And I, the tree you see there on the back above the chimney, that's the popcorn tree. Kill it. And uh, the remarks section says, I need more sun. Well, there are other factors involved too. My insurance agent has indicated to me that now that he's aware of this issue, that the threat to the roof of the house would likely not result in the non-renewal of my insurance policy. Are you sure this is not the state champion popcorn tree? Excuse me? Are you sure this is not the state champion popcorn tree? Well, that's a big one. Russell said he's... <laughs> It's Russell, a Russell doesn't care anything about popcorn trees. Well, I, I know he doesn't, well. yeah. But uh, the, the comment about more sun in the backyard, yes, I would like to put a garden back there. But okay. it, the primary reason is to get it off my threat to my roof. All right. All right. Is there anyone from the neighborhood or anyone to speak to this project? Ms. Callaway, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Laura Callaway, president of the Garden District Preservation Association. Uh, we do not have any objection to this, given how close it is to the house. Uh, if the uh, urban forester can see fit to put another canopy tree somewhere else in the district, we would really appreciate that. All right. Whose responsibility would it be to pay for that tree? It's on your property, Mr. Yeaman, it's going to be you. Excuse me? You. Well, you know what? I'm living on my Social Security right now, and there is no money left in the pot to buy a tree. And I'd appreciate your understanding in that regard. The last time we had tree removal on the property, 1414, we did replace them. And Russell made some very good recommendations in that regard. There's no further discussion. May I have a motion? I move to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? Opposed? You're, you're opposed? I'm opposed because I think a tree should be put in this spot. Well, not in, in that spot, but in some spot. In some spot, because okay. I don't want to set the precedent. Okay. That motion carried. It was 6 1. Okay. Is that it? It's, yes, that's it. What's the timetable for putting up the replacement tree? A year? We approved, I thought, didn't we approve it without him having to replace yes. it? Yes, but we said the president that in the future we would need to. Excuse so me? Been, I can hardly hear what you're saying. You've been approved without having to replace oh, the okay. tree. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much. But we are setting a precedent that you do that for the future that people would need to replace I it. I understand that. Thank you so very much. Okay. Okay. Stay safe and sane. Thank you. All right. Paul Hare. Good uh, evening. Re re good evening. Request for you rear yard fence, well, and a side yard fence for the property at 642 Felder Avenue, Cloverdale. Yes, so my wife and I recently purchased this house and we were hoping to put a fence in the far southwest um, corner for our pets to keep our dogs safe. Um, I think the fence would primarily be hidden from the view of the road, except on this view of the house where it would adjoin to the neighbor's privacy fence. Um, 
it would also cover up the view of the somewhat dilapidated privacy fence that the neighbors have in the far south corner of the house. Is there any discussion on this from the audience? Darby Forrester representing the Old Cloverdale Association. Um, we talked about this in our meeting and we were sort of wondering why you're putting the wooden fence down the middle of the backyard. Yeah, so. Excuse me. It, Sorry. Just, it seems a little strange. <laughs> yeah, so we were just trying to, we have two small wiener dogs, and we were just trying to um, keep them safe in the far corner of our, of our yard, and we didn't want it to, um, we didn't want the fence to butt right up to the evergreens that are right against the road, um, so we were just trying to keep off that, so it stayed out of view and out of sight, out of mind. Uh, we don't have any objection. Okay. This is a really prominent house mm -hmm. at what is probably the 100% corner in Cloverdale. Mm -hmm. Everybody stops there multiple times a day. And I, I have a hard time with a privacy fence where there's no screening. It would, if it was a nicer fence, I wouldn't have any problem with it. If you're willing to uh, plant like some Japanese viburnum like they've done on the uh, Cloverdale Roadside on the, is that Ridge or Felder? It's Felder there. Felder. Yeah. What if we painted it? It's still an ugly dog-eared stockade fence on the main street. Mm -hmm. And that's just not good. I'll have to see pictures of what you're talking about. So you're talking about something with vines coming over the top? Uh, I would, uh, the, the, you're, you've got either holly, I, Thompson's holly or Japanese viburnum planted on the property line. Yes. Down at, on the other side, either like those across there, across on the Felder Avenue side. Yes. Yes, there are. So, so you would like us to plant holly along the line of the fence? Yes, in front of it. In front of it. Um, but you're talking, you're talking about the section between the house and the property line to the neighbor's right. privacy fence. Yes. 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 Okay. Not, not the one on that the bisects the yard. Okay. Just, just that. Yeah, just that little strip so no, there. So not, not double screening the back section just screening the section that runs from That's perpendicular correct. from right. the house. I'm right. concerned about what's, what the view from the public way. Right, I understand. Um, Not, yeah, I don't see why that would be a problem. My only counter would be that the neighbors already have a fence that's viewable from that public way and it's pretty dilapidated already. So I would think that a newer fence would only improve that. I can't do anything about what's there already, but I, I can attempt to do something about a new fence in that location. Mm -hmm. It would be less expensive to put up a wire fence and plant the, the hollies in front of them rather than put up a board fence. Yeah. And over, over a period of time, the wire fence will be a lot less um, expensive to maintain. Yeah. And you could do like a dark green coated chain link fence mm -hmm. or a welded wire fence on posts with the, the uh, trees, bushes, slash bushes planted in front of them. But it, it does need to be a variety of something that's going to stay green all the way to the ground, not something that's going to turn into a tree with, you know, right. bushes on the top of it like a, like a, uh, Crate murder would do. Okay, so so we can do some sort of evergreens along yes. that line. Okay. Yes. Um, what about where the gate is? What about? What if, if we put a gate on that portion of the fence? Would there need to be evergreens in front of the gate? No. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's, it's good with us. Me. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else have comments? Since I've dominated the discussion, I apologize. If there's no further discussion, anyone from the audience, further discussion? 
Then may I have a motion? I'll, I'll move to approve as, I guess, presented to include the foliage, Mr. Harris. Yeah. Okay. Move to approve as submitted. Second. As presented? As, <laughs> sorry, I've actually worked today. As, <laughs> sub, as presented, not as submitted, as presented and after the okay. discussion with Madam Chair. All right. Second. All in favor? Opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you. Will we get a, a copy of this, what we presented? You'll get a letter that okay. states what the approval was for. Okay. Um, are you, is this your mailing address now? Yes, it is. Okay. okay. You'll, you'll get that in the next few days. Okay, thank you very much. All right. I'm sorry, I think I'm having a second Monday in a row here. That's perfectly all right. Today is like Yogi Berra said, it's deja vu all over again. <coughs> Hello, I'm John Espinwall. Uh, John, Harry, thank you for coming today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what the homeowner is after is a circular drive in front of her house. Um, she has difficulty getting in and out, and the driveway to the side is a shared driveway now, and just a place where she can park and um, get in and out um, easily. There's an apartment building and then one other neighbor that, or two other neighbors that share that driveway there. None of that is evident from the street for sure. This, this front yard visually, I mean there may be enough physical room there to do a semi-circular driveway. There may be enough actual room there, but, but from a design point of view, this is not very consistent with the historic character of the neighborhood, or particularly of that street. It would be more in keeping, although I realize as I say this that it causes a problem with her having to back into the street right. to widen the driveway at that point to provide a pull-off in the front, right. rather than the circular driveway. And, and with that step back that her house has, with that sort of sun porch built room on the side, it wouldn't be as intrusive there as covering most of the front yard with paving. Um, Someone else may have another idea. Well, I, I, John, I've, uh, the first picture you showed, could you go back to uh, 4A, please? Something I noticed when I was reviewing these pictures this afternoon. Top picture, please. The top photo, on the, yeah, there you go, right there. Uh, to the right of that red brick sidewalk, that's a water, that's a water meter box. Yeah. And, I mean, you're talking about a 14 foot wide driveway, or? Well, it would be, end and that would be in the driveway right there, that water meter box, which is not uncommon to, and the driveway would just be to the side of it, the outside edge would be to the out, just to the outside of that box, and then most of the driveway would be to the inside of that box. So I guess what, what your client wants to do is, if they put if if the circular driveway were put in, if you were pulling into her driveway, that meter box would be on the right side of the car, pulling into the circular driveway. It'd be in the car. It, it would be in the driveway there. In the driveway. Yes, they're made of cast iron. There's, it's not a thing to drive over. Okay. Which isn't apparent from the front at all. Darby, do you all have any comments on this? I would love to hear them. Hmm. You know, 
Darby Forrest representing the Old Cloverdale Association. Um, John Aspinwall did come to our uh, association meeting and, and present the plan. Um, first of all, you know, when she bought the house, she would knew that it was a shared drive. So that's something there that she knew it was going to be a shared drive. That house, they took down the huge Insco property house and they used the wood to build that little house and sort of stuck it on this little piece of land like they have done in a lot of houses in Oak Cloverdale where they took the big part of land and put another house on it. So it sort of squished in there. But if you try to put a circular driveway in there first, I, I think it's going to um, eventually kill the pine tree and then the bushes that are around it. It's not consistent with uh, driveways in Oak Cloverdale. Um, typically, they're just the straight driveways up. That's the way they were built because most people usually just had one car. I know there are circular driveways in Oak Cloverdale. However, the majority of them were put in prior to historic designation. Um, I think it's going to look like the, we, we feel like the entire, uh, it's going to look like the driveway takes up the entire um, front yard. Um, so we don't think it's appropriate. We don't think it's going to look good. We would consider if we saw plans for putting in a uh, parking pad on the left-hand uh, side as you're facing the street um, so, that she, so that, that you could pull in right there and not have to um, go into the, the back to park. Um, but we'd like to see plans uh, for that and landscaping for there, that. There are a couple of other, I can think of two other houses on that street that have parking pads in the front yard like you described. Yes, ma'am. They have better visibility trying to back out than she would. That's true. Um, now the parking pad that's on the street next, the, the house right next to it, we did oppose that one, but y'all approved it anyway. Um, the reason we, and we are not, and Oak Cloverdale has made a stance that we are not for parking pads or for circular driveways and things like that. Um, but in this case, because it is a shared driveway and there's really not a whole lot of parking for that, ha for that house and other people use it, we would consider the parking pad. Um, I understand backing out and all of that, but um, I, I back out onto a busy street ev every day. Um, it's, it's just part of living in a historic neighborhood. I've shuffled cars since I was 16. Um, <laughs> it's part of living in a historic neighborhood. Um, and we just feel that the circular driveway would take up the majority of the yard and it would not look appropriate. What do you think about a parking pad that comes off the shared driveway? So they use the shared driveway to get in and out and then you could leave the green space there in the front. Yeah, that's what we talked about at our yeah. meeting, but using the shared driveway and come into a parking pad. Um, we said we would like to see plans for that in, in, in the in shrubbery and and how that was going to do, but yes, we would be glad to consider that. And you know, due to the fact that it is a shared driveway, but yeah, come in off of that shared driveway and have the parking pad. Yes, you're still going to have to back up, but maybe you could, you know, back around and then come straight out. Yes. Have and then, you? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, John. Have you discussed with your client the possibility of like? Elizabeth and Darby were saying a yeah, parking. I, I, I told her what all went on at the meeting and such. A um, couple of the items is she has to go regularly to the doctor. She has um, bone issues and everything else, and mobility is a problem, just turning and everything, and that's one reason where if she could drive for it. I, I think was, this would actually help it because if you drive in, her, the driveway side, the driver's side would be on the door side. Whereas if you pull in on a circular drive, she'll be on the opposite side, unless she goes opposite. I mean, just depending on which side of the circular you pull yeah, in, she'd be I right mean, at I, the don't, door. I don't think her car would be within like five feet differential between a parking pad and a circular drive. Mm, you'd, you'd have to come up steps and all of a sudden, but, but, but the you other have part to come is up just the steps either way. 
I'm the homeowner, and so what I'd like to say about the parking pad to the side still backs out blindly into that driveway. Currently, that driveway is servicing six other vehicles besides my own. When I bought the property, that driveway was almost, you had to drive very, very slow across it or you were going to end up with concrete up underneath your car. Since then, we have repaired that driveway. Um, initially, when I came and looked at the property, there was not the NASCAR driving up and down the driveway that there is now. It doesn't matter whether I'm parked in front of that sunroom on the side there, or if I'm parked in the back. Pulling out on both, in both locations is blind. Who owns? It's backing out directly into oncoming traffic that when they're coming from the fourplex behind me or the garage behind me, they cannot see me. Who, who owns the units behind you? Who owns the people that park behind there? Who owns the units? Who's, who are they renting from? There's a, another house that actually uses that, that the man owns it, and then he owns the fourplex. I'm not, I don't okay. know his name. And then I believe one of them is the um, pastor at First United Methodist Church. Is Mario Andretti? <laughs> I don't know, but he his his uh, garage is yeah, one of it's, those. It's, it's then the apartment, and then the guy that owns the apartment lives there. He's, he's a lawyer. And thing. Ha, have you talked with them and explained yeah. the situation and see if maybe they would talk to the tenants about not you know being a lot more careful? A, about a neighborly meet and greet would go a long way. <laughs> I've stopped them. <laughs> I have gone out and asked them to please slow down without any response. They, quite frankly, don't care. As John can attest, John's usually in and out of my house doing a lot of work. And as John is saying, they're just in and out. They're have you talked to the, to the owner of the apartments? I have not talked to him recently about it. The point is, is it still, whether it's the one parking spot in the back or the parking pad right there, it still leaves it in a blind spot. I think if we put the circular driveway in, it gives, and we're talking one car, we're talking me. I'm not in and out of that driveway on a constant basis. I might go somewhere one or, once or twice a week, otherwise you're gonna see me and my car there. And so the wear and tear and the possibility, it's not gonna be that close to that tree. Um, I, I, we I'm will sorry, make a it concrete, beautiful. A concrete driveway is gonna affect that tree. And I think it's gonna look like a big piece of concrete in the middle of a small yard with a car parked in front of it. It's not consistent with historic designation. It's not the way driveways are. And, and, and our association has said that we, you know, we do, um, we're, we're not for that. The reason we're making the exception is because it's this air driveway to try to do the parking pad. I, go ahead. One was mentioned, no circular. The house directly across the street has a circular drive. The house to the left has a circular drive. And the house to the right of this house is the one with the parking pad, the gravel parking pad in the front yard. And so the, the, the one, the Insco property was built in the 50s or 60s. The parking pad that is for the house that is facing Cloverdale Road has been there since I moved in in fourth grade. And Old Cloverdale did, um, uh, did not recommend the parking pad for the house next door to it. But that house also has a much larger front yard. That parking pad was also put in illegally. Yes, it was a violation.
As far as circular drives go, if you look at 616, I'll, I can bring you the pictures, 616 Cloverdale has a dedicated personal driveway and then a nice little circular driveway out front with very, very small yard and tree directly out front. What does your agreement say on the use of that of your driveway for others, your your house, property, documents? I, sorry. The, the, your your property documents for your house. Does it say that it has to be used? Your driveway has to be used for others. Yes. It does. Yes. Okay. There's a shared driveway agreement that's been in force for I guess quite a long time. Originally, that property was an alleyway that gave access back to the property. Currently, the minister's garage encroaches four feet into, the, into my property. Um, the way that it's angled, it makes it absolutely impossible for anybody other than a very, very smart caller like mine to park in the back of that house because you have to give access coming in the for the fourplex for their vehicles to feed out through the gravel driveway down to the paved driveway. One of the reasons this driveway works that you took the picture of is that their lawn is their yard. Your house is elevated, so everything that we're seeing is going to be at an angle and it's going to be up here more prominent than it does when it's flat like this. Right. Right. Is there any further discussion on this property? Um, there is a, another item that doesn't pertain to the driveway, but the um, door was painted red, which is not an approved color on the palette. I don't know if that's something that you want to take up now or if you want them to make an a application for. I think they probably need to make a separate application. Are we ready for, for a motion? I move that the petitioner's request be denied because the circular driveway on this particular property is not consistent with the nature and character of the neighborhood in the Stark District. Second. Could we add that I encourage the petitioner to to come back to the board with a plan for um, uh, options on this? Absolutely. I'm, I'm just, my motion is strictly for what is being asked for. If okay. the petitioner wants to come back next time with different options, parking pad, what have you, anything else, I'd be certainly more than glad to listen to, listen to that. All right. Second? Yes, ma'am, I second that. All right. Motion. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. I'm sorry. So I, I am personally give some information. I personally don't have a problem with a driveway. I just don't like the circular driveway. So just a single car or widening the existing driveway makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, we want you to get in safely and be able to park near your house. I, absolutely. Uh, I don't have a problem per se with circular driveways. Just on this property, it would take up a very large piece of the green space out front. Uh, again, not to say that, you know, John's been doing this for many, many years. Maybe he can work some design to come up with a way that, that you know, parking pad or whatnot would, would work. And I understand I live on a busy street myself, ma'am. Have to back out every day and stop and look twice. So uh, I can appreciate your 
your concerns. Uh, and again, any any plans that John may come up with, we'd be certain more than, more than happy to consider. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Maritza Velasquez, did I get that right? You did, but I am not Miss Velasquez. <laughs> <laughs> gosh, gosh. Uh, my I name is Steve that. Hughes um, with Jeff Code Engineers and Surveyors, and we are representing Miss Maritza Velasquez in proposing this uh, parking lot uh, on 2305 St. Charles. Any comments from the, from the audience on this project? Comments from the board? First, a really nice, complete presentation that you, you sent in. I'm, I'm sorry, say? It's a really nice, complete presentation that you sent. Oh. All of the questions I had when I read the proposal for the project were answered when I looked at the pictures. So, well, we, you. you can see by the title, Scheme E, we've, we've turned it around <laughs> a few times. This was not your first stab at it. It huh? was not. They didn't send it to me until they had Scheme C. So, ah. um. so you're right. It went around in the house a few times before <laughs> we even submitted it. Bring it to us the first time. That way, you don't have to keep on coming back. Like. Exactly. Some, some people have. So it appears because this is a multi-unit complex, you have to treat it differently than a single residence, correct? Correct. A little bit. And, and I like the fact that you've got uh, landscape buffers to kind of... Uh, yes, and Mr. Stringer's allowed us to actually hide, hide the put, zone put some additional uh, landscaping into the right-of-way so we can screen it even more. All right. We, we have all seen any number of apartment buildings of this size and nature and design that had this kind of parking, parking lot in front of it from the get-go. So while I, I do bemoan the loss of the big yard in the front yard, this doesn't look odd or strange or like you shove some parking in there. It, looks, it has a look like it's always been there, which makes it easier. And uh, I actually lived in this building for about three years in the late 80s, and being able to not park on the street would have been great. Yep, I'm sure. Are you ready for a motion, Madam Chair? I'm ready. I move to approve as submitted. Second. All, all in favor? Opposed? Good, good to go to Scheme E. Good luck on your project. Who was the second on that? Yes. Is that you, Hillary? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. Chase Caraway, 516 Thorn Place, Cloverdale. It is a working kind of day. Sometimes people take my advice before they get before you all, and sometimes they don't. Like I did on Scheme A of, or did on Scheme a of this driveway. <laughs> we like pictures and plans. We really, really do. A revised parking plan. So I was planning to sell this house last year and I ended up not ever doing the driveway that y'all proposed. And you've, got, you've got to get closer to the microphone. I was planning to sell this house last year and I ended up renting it out instead so I never did the driveway that y'all approved last year and the more input I've had and I'm actually currently living in it I really don't think the parking pad in the front is the best solution um, so so what it is right now is the two spots right off the street and what I'm wanting to do now instead of having last year yeah, last year y'all approved two parking pad spot behind that cedar tree, so we'd go around uh -huh. that tree. So now I'm kind of wanting to just do one spot, almost like a turnaround right there, and then go on through the fence and just have the two parking spots behind the fence. You really don't have any other access to your backyard, do you? No, this lot was split off. It used to have a carriage house, and uh -huh. it was split by one of the previous owners, so the alley access isn't connected there. So. Okay. Anybody from the audience wish to speak? Ms. Forrester? 
get your daily exercise with your hike to the microphone. Darby Forster representing the Old Cloverdale Association. We like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to push the cars farther back so yep. you won't see them. Yep. I think it's very good landscaping that's being proposed um, in the walkway. We think it will look uh, very nice, um, much better than the originally proposed circular driveway. <laughs> and it's off to the side, and it's, um, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion from the board? Then may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? Excellent. Great work. I'm glad you didn't move. <laughs> All right. Jake Johnson. Gonna hold it for the end or go ahead? What? You gonna hold it for the end or go ahead? For me. Oh, okay. We can do that. Wait, we're not going to make him get up and present. Come on now. I'll oh, present at the end. You'll, you'll, you'll get, the get end. your chance to harass me. Okay. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay, who's next? Calvin C. Fluker III, addition of a porch railing to ex replace existing railing at 472 Clinton Avenue, Garden District. You are not Calvin. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually in Dallas. I'm here to speak on his behalf. Could we get right, your name, please? Cassandra Crosby. All right. Thank you. Go right ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, he just sent me a note on what he's willing to do, he said. Um, he would, remove, he would re remove the two middle rails and put up a vertical one-by-one -one slate, but not a full demo if not possible, and he would paint it also. You probably see pictures of it right now. Well, not right now. That's not it. That's the so that differs from what I see here in my packet? Yes. Is that the original? I had this. Cassandra, do you mind um, retelling us what you propose? For oh. that railing to be? I'm sorry, I missed get, that. Get close enough to the microphone so that we can hear you too. Is that better? Yes, yes. yes. thank you. He's proposing to remove the two middle rails and put up a vertical one by one, put up vertical one by one slates. Mike, would you scroll up please to the picture of the house? Okay. So oh, there, there appears that. to be a total of four horizontal rails and he's just taken out the middle two? Yes. And we don't know how tall that is, which I think is taller than 36 inches. I'd say it's about four feet myself. Um, I have a quick question. Will he be adding the ledge on top, to the cap, to kind of finish it off? Uh, the the proposed picture that you that's on here. The the what she said is not is not that. I don't think. It, no, it's not. That, okay. That's why I'm asking because the, the proposed picture is more finished than if he were to just remove the center two and then add the little the one by one spindles. You still need to, it needs to be finished on top. And yeah, the, the, we do need to know the dimensions mm -hmm. because that's, that seems kind of tall in reference to the other picture that was present that's presented as proposed. I really can't answer that. I haven't seen the other picture. I'll talk to him about that, so I'm not right. sure. Okay. If, can we scroll up to the next picture? I mean, I should say scroll down. down. I think. <laughs> next yeah. one. Let's next. Yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah, that picture. That looks much better to me. Yeah. Uh, but the the size of the wood pieces that are actually already there are wider than as a, right. So that would still be like if you were going to go with the proposed, there would still be a full demolition. You know, you see what I'm saying? I do. In, in order to make it look like that. I see that. He stays in here. No full demo. 
there anyone from the audience to speak to this project? Laura Calloway with the Garden District. Um, we don't have any objection to something that looks like the picture of the proposed, but uh, what it sounds like they're describing, it would not look like that when it was finished. So we do object to taking down the two middle rails and just putting one by ones in between the two big boards. Okay. Miss Cassandra, do you even know how tall that top rail is on the on the porch? I do not. Okay, but I it think seems we to need, be taller than that one. Obviously you're not doing the work and whoever is or did this is otherwise occupied tonight. I I'd, I'd really need to talk to him because again What's being proposed is not what you're telling me, and I understand you don't really know what's going on. You're just here trying to take over for somebody. So well, and you all, yeah. you all, I, we had an official submission. So if you all want to take action on what was submitted, I'll, I can and do that. not I consider this alternate plan because if those if those horizontal boards are one by something, you're not going to be able to put a cap on it. It's it's not wide enough to accommodate a cap, so I don't I don't even think that would I don't think you could finish it off to have a spot to hold your drink without it teetering off the top of it. Well, that's important I, to some of us. I have a hard time imagining how, how stuff looks. My wife tells me this all the time, but <laughs> even I know that what Miss Cassandra said the owner wants to do is not going to look anything close to what's proposed, which I think would be fine. So. I'm ready to make a motion. Whatever. And he, he did specify that um, the proposed, the email he sent me yesterday said the rail height would be 32 inches um, above the, the porch floor. Um, now, he didn't stipulate that he would finish. A, a typical porch rail should be under 36. I understand. Uh, 26 to 36. And I, I really can't tell how, how that top rail is right now as it sits, but I, it... I don't believe it's 32 inches, though. No, it looks more uh, like 36 I, or 40. I'd say it's... Oh, no, the existing one is not. No, but I asked him what this proposed rail height was, and he said if he built this, yeah. it would be 32. But it should also be specified it needs to be painted as a porch okay. rail. Well, I have no trouble approving what was submitted, but we don't have enough information on an alternate proposal to be able to consider it, in my opinion. And I agree. All right. What do we do? Um, I mean, I can move to deny the request now because lack of information, or but we can... What? I think you have the information on what he submitted. But not the alternate. Can we uh, either approve what was submitted, which is a total demolition in this new design, or he can submit supplemental drawings for his, for other other proposals? You could approve it, and he could still submit supplemental drawings. But this is a violation, so we need to. Um, it's not. It's not your problem to solve. Okay. Um, well, I have to be reminded of that once in a while. Okay. I will move to approve as submitted or in in what, what we have here as Mr. Fluker has submitted. And if he wants to change it, Ms. Cassandra, he can certainly apply to have it amended and we can come back and look at it again. But if he's gonna do it right and, and make it right, fine, he won't have to. All right. uh, but if he wants to do something like you've mentioned, uh, he, he needs to come back and talk to us about that. So you are approving the original submission that he proposed? The, what he has proposed in writing to the city, yes. Okay. That's approved. What yeah. you have told us, correct? Okay. Yes. What you have told us tonight that he was going to do is just remove the two middle and put in the spindles. That, we are not approving that. Okay. Okay. We're approving that. Just we're like approving. That. We're approving that. Okay. All right. All right. And does that include that it be painted? And I, I would also include that it be it be painted. Yeah. It be I'll finished. make sure it's painted as recommended by by the support staff. And What's since it's a violation, we need a time frame yeah. for compliance. Sixty, ninety days. I don't know. 
I mean, it, sh it doesn't seem like it should take a long time to remove what's there and replace. So I would say 90, within 90 days. That should be good time to get a contractor to come out there and really work. And if you need more time, you know. Okay. Right. Call me. Okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Good deal. Thank you, guys. Okay. We did, did we vote we, on something? Did we, we did. We need. You need to make a motion, which you did, but you didn't say it was a motion. And then we need to second it, and then we need to vote. <clears throat> Once again, I talked too much and got myself right, right out of it. All right, I, I move to approve the. I, I move to. Mm, move to approve as submitted in the proposal, provided also that it be painted and finished. Second. second. Within okay. 90 days. Within, within 90 days. <laughs> Sorry, who gave the second, please? Was that you, Jake? Oh, Katie. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Oh, we got to go. We, we didn't vote on it, did we? All in favor? Yes. <laughs> Opposed? All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the last item on the agenda, Christina Cadden, 1616 South Perry Street. It's a little thing. I'm Spencer Cadden. Thank you for your time. Um, I suppose we can start with the uh, ADA steel black ramp. Um, we had originally submitted to have it um, basically go to the front deck. Um, I sent an email to Christy. They've today. got copies of that. Okay. Um, that we'd now like to have it go to the back porch. Uh, we just need to get basically final approval from the inspections department, which we haven't done yet. Um, so we ask that both options be approved, but we would like to do the one going to the back. And then it's also the change to the uh, driveway gate there. Um, it was originally just the columns, um, partially because of the pushback on the parking pads. Um, we submitted this so that it'd have a bit more screening um, to go with the, uh, the plants that we're using for screening as well. We're also going to be adding, um, right now we have Japanese viburnums planted at the front of the property, and we're going to be putting some, um, some more plants in between them to get more screening uh, and like planter boxes. Is the, is the plan that I'm looking at here for going to the back door, because it looks like to me it's going to the front door, are they the same? There are two. So there's the, two. There's a, the handout that I gave you all oh. goes to the back door. That The one in your packet comes off the, the front terrace to the south. Well, it's, I seem to have lost it. Would you scroll back up? Um, let me see which page we need. Yeah, we're back to the original. Um, I don't mind it. 9E. But this is not bad either, whichever one they want to do. Okay, yeah. So that was what we originally proposed, um, going to the front deck and then planting more screening in front of it. In the front. Well, the ADA does say that, that people, the handicapped person, should have the same level of access that anybody else does. So going to the front door would probably be, is that where most people come in, or do they go in the back, or both? It might actually be more 
where people go in through the back. It okay. is the same level. Okay. And there would be um, one of the nice things about going to the back is that <laughs> the threshold into the back door is just like an inch and a half, so a uh -huh. small tapered ramp, whereas going to the front, there's yep. two additional six inch steps. Okay. Um, so we do either have to do a So it ramp. sounds like the back would be more, uh, more accommodating to the, mm -hmm. and, and plenty of people do go in the back door too. So, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. that's good. And that, I'm sorry, is that the new proposal to have access for the handicapped to go into the back? Mm -hmm. And the uh, original was to the front? Okay. Uh, yeah, and so we just haven't gotten final approval for the back one, so I just... I understand. <laughs> right. Do we have any, any discussion from the audience about this project? Ms. Callaway? <clears throat> um, Garden District Preservation Association, uh, we do not have any objections to the handicap ramp, either front or back, whatever turns out best for y'all. Thank you. Um, we have come to the conclusion, although there has been a great deal of consternation in the neighborhood about AstroTurf, that the driveway as completed uh, is satisfactory and looks nice, especially with the planned uh, pillars and gate that are gonna be put up. Um, the only thing we've got a little bit of heartburn about, and I don't know how the uh, business zoning affects this, we would much rather see just the address on the gateway pillars rather than something that uh, says this is not a residential property because keeping it as residential looking as possible will keep the heartburn down in the neighborhood about the zoning change. So that that's our input. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion from the board about the uh, Parking and the new proposal for the entrance. Does the uh, uh, Garden District prefer the new entrance with the big, huge brick wall versus the other? Because that does have a more, you know, less residential look. Yeah. Well, as far as the signage, understand it's going to be. Facing, your, facing the entrance that will be to the left, solar powered uh, lights. Mm -hmm. I didn't see how, how tall are the numbers letters going to be? Are they going to be consistent or are you going to have different sizes? It would be consistent. Uh, I guess I, I assume the establish 1915 was the, would be smaller. Uh, but I think the other letters were the same. I preferred the original proposal to this one because it looks more residential. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have any objection to a smaller and squared rather than the swoopy curve uh, brick wall for you to put um, the address of the building on. I can understand the need for that so that people will see. It also helps sort of define this is where I turn in mm -hmm. on that. Um, I have to say that the first time I, I drove by and saw that they had put in the Trinity Presbyterian Church sign that I nearly ran my car into the curb because it was so <laughs> huge. <laughs> and you're, you're building, while well, a huge house is not as big as Trinity Presbyterian Church, I think that's a little bit out of scale. So something scaled down, and I would just prefer a plain rectangle brick. But I think that the the... The original proposal is just, it's softer, mm -hmm. it um, quieter, and I think that it, it just makes everything, it keeps it in, you want it to be less important than the house, and the house is way back off the street, so you, you're not looking, you know, it's not right up on you. So I think everything needs to be really subordinate to that, that uh, facade of the house. And, and while 
If you had asked me about AstroTurf, I would have said no. It really looks okay. And <coughs> I've actually gotten a lot of people uh, sending me comments that they liked it, they liked the way it looked. If you'd okay. asked me, I would have said, let's paint an Italian palazzo <laughs> pattern on the concrete rather mm -hmm. than this. But this looks pretty good. I'm, I'm interested to see how it's going to weather. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think it'll hold up well. We'll have to see. Um, we've glued, we haven't glued down all of it yet, and it pretty much stays where it's at um, for the most part. But it'll all be secured with like, construction adhesive, and yeah, um, yeah. We definitely didn't want to have to change it up, but when we realized we did, we wanted it to look as close as possible and make sure that the like, impervious surface. Uh, we actually did did less than we originally approved for. Well, it's not like you're gluing Astro turf on the house, <laughs> or right. or That's on right. some original parking area that was historic and associated with the house. This is new, mm -hmm. and it's it's um, it's setting rather than than the historic property. And I don't I think it doesn't detract from the setting. Uh, it's. For people who know it's there, it's very obvious, but just driving by, especially since, because of the one-way street, if you were coming the other way, it'd be more prominent. Mm -hmm. But coming from the one-way street, it's a, it's a click in your, in your side glance if you happen to look that way. So it's not, it's not very uh, obvious really at all. Mm -hmm. And I guess on the, the <laughs> gates themselves, we liked the first one too because you know, we submitted it. Um, I think part of the reason we wanted to go for the larger facade was probably because of the pushback on the on the pads. Uh, it's just give a little more screening so that um, doesn't upset anyone. Covers covers well, that probably up better. You, probably nobody told you they thought it looked good, but I saw a lot of Facebook and and. Uh, next door comments that were very positive about it. it it's been mostly positive. It's just they were not the people calling me. I should have. I should have uh, <laughs> in the first said that I had a lot of ex parte. I had a lot of ex parte listening rather than conversation about your project. Well, you're not going to satisfy everybody, so don't try. Anyway. All right. What are we going to do about the screening? What do you think? Don't really have a problem with the wall is submitted. I, I'm not a wall person. I'm a fence person. Uh, I, mean, I, I like what's, what's presented, Laura. Uh, for what it's worth, if they wanted to go back to the lower uh, screening, we wouldn't have any objection okay. to that. You're talking about the original proposal? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And then come up with a sign that could mount on the fence for V put in the same location but freestanding or something, something like resubmitted. That. What do you want to do? That's I think the script is too much. Yeah, so. and I also wasn't in love with <clears throat> the way it turned out. It was kind of a, I did it quickly to get it submitted and say, okay, we'll do kind of this sort of style at the front. Um, I think we could certainly look at scaling back the, the size of it, and that might have it make more sense. Um, but I think part of the reason we lo looked at it is because on the left side of the driveway, the, we didn't get any of the Japanese viburnums planted there, so that's okay. kind of barren. And basically the, the sand that they brought in to do the pads, like nothing's growing in it. So <laughs> that, that, that makes the, the original screening harder to implement. Okay. So um, we could maybe look at doing a different design on the, the gate. That uh, might be the, the best way to go. I think something smaller would be more in keeping with the neighborhood. Because otherwise, it just looks like an extension of Trinity. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Can't say it doesn't. But all right, can we work on a motion? Mm. John, you don't have to do every one. Don't make it easy on you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
going to take a well. All right. As far as the, as far as the handicap ramp, certainly move. It, a motion with subparts move that the owners have their choice, either the original submission or what they have presented to us presented to us today. Uh, as far as the gating, again, I'll leave it to their choice to go with what is proposed here or the original submission, which is a smaller with a less, uh, a bit of a less. Uh, I don't think look. that's quite it. Okay. I think that, that the original submission is still approved and that if you want to do more brick and a sign that you need to scale what you brought back and come back with a new submission. And, and we do not do code compliance at all. That's for another board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so we don't need, do we need to state that it has to be code compliance? For the, I mean, the ramp? My, yeah, my only concern was what we were given today states that they're not yet determined if the rear option is code compliant. Right, but they're working with the building department on that. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's not our decision. Yeah, no, that's yeah. not us. All right. That's it, not, yeah. that's not it our should problem. be fine. Yeah, if it's we approve they it, have they come, seen if, it and if we approve something, good. they come in and say, no, you're not, then you know, yes, okay, so you're the, not. The back uh, all right, what, what were we talking about on the gate, the brick? All right, the original submission is still approved. And they need to work on the scale. That we're, they're welcome to come back with another submission for more brick on the front, but they need to reduce the scale. So you could table that portion. We so could table that portion. You could, you could table the the gate and wall proposal subject to additional. Okay. There we go. Drawings and information you got as that, as discussed. Got it. All right. Now, let's go for again on the motion. Do we just, okay, do we just have wheelchair <laughs> wrap and, and, and gate? That's what we're on? Yes. No. All righty then. All righty then. All right, I move that we approve, uh, give the owners a choice concerning the wheelchair ramp, either front access or back access. I also move that we table uh, approval of the wall or the gate pending uh, the owners providing additional information on the scale. Okay. What would be, what would be a good scale, would you say? So right now we had it going six foot let's, down to four let's foot. Let's vote on the motion in the Let us vote thing. first. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. Yeah, let us, sorry. let's take yeah. care of this <laughs> and then we'll talk. All right, that's my motion. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? All right, All right now. <laughs> Good. What would be Talk a good about. scale? Can you roll up to the pictures of the... Charlie. Thank you. Yeah, so I think I made it as long as the pad. So it's you got something two 12 like 18 feet sidewalls feet. Yeah. and probably a 12 foot gate and then like two, two foot columns. Well, according to this, one side is 12 feet, so that'd be 24 feet plus whatever the width of the gate okay. and the pillars are. So it's, you're probably looking at 40, 42 feet from one end of the, from one end of the uh, gate brick to the other end. That, that sounds right, yes. I think part of that was so that it would be in front of the pads that are on either side. Okay. So that's, yeah, you, you said that's the shield of parking pads behind you. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I think more like four or five feet, but it's hard for me to judge without seeing a drawing. 
Mm -hmm. So it's and four. I, and it's I, four at the tail end of it. Yes. So it drops down to that. Yes. Okay. I think y'all are talking two different things. I think she's talking about the width, total width. No, I'm talking about the height. The total oh, the height. total height? Yes. All the way across? Yes. Just flat? Okay. But the 12 feet doesn't bother you? Well, I'd rather have the original proposal. But if, if, the, the, if the neighborhood preferred the brick because it screened more, then I'm willing to go along with that, although I don't think it's as good. Makes sense. How about lower brick? How about you go out with two pilasters? One, you have the two in the center, then you put one on both sides, and then between that, you have a low riding brick wall at like 18 inches, which is gonna block some of that, and then you put the fencing above it. I think it needs to be taller than 18 inches. 24, but then you go up and then you put the fencing above that, and then. Okay, you can do that. The, yeah. the John Blue Hill House, I think, has that kind of fence. Yep, I'm talking the about governor's something, mansion has something that like that. Fence. You the governor's it. mansion has that kind of fence. Oh, You've got okay. a low wall and then the fence yeah. on top. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see what we're talking about? Yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 Um, yeah yours is much prettier than mine. What do we do with their sign? Can we wrap this up and y'all can discuss it afterwards? Yeah. Right? All right. But what, what about the sign then? So the sign is tabled then too because it was on the wall. The yeah, we're going to. Sign, yeah, the sign is tabled because I mean, yeah, the wall the wall is yeah. tabled, so the signage will be tabled. So, okay. you know, work on the ramp either way y'all want to go with, and then once we get y'all get this figured out, we'll take care of the signage and the wall. Right. I have a question: Is the parking pad itself resolved now? Was any decision made about that, or is that tabled as well? There wasn't a question about it on the okay. submission. Okay. No, it's already there. I mean, I, mean, I was just asking so about it, it in relation. It was a violation. I mean, it was a departure from their original plan. Yeah. Christy, and do we need to address that in a motion? If you would like yes, to, please. that would nip it in the bud. And, and that's why I would like to be able to go back to my neighborhood and either tell them it's resolved or it's not, but I'd rather tell them it's resolved. I mean, I, since I've... I've well, Put it in the comments in case it came up this evening, but it also means, you know, we advertised it as alterations to the previously approved plan. So as, as far as I'm concerned, it is an item available for discussion. Um, I did tell someone Friday that the position that we had taken stands, that we were going to allow them to finish their project and determine whether or not there was any negative visual impact on the property. I think Elizabeth addressed that this evening in her comments with regard to it being a new feature to the house. Um, and if it's a non-issue, it's a non-issue. So, so we gotta wait for them to finish their project before we can determine what if any impact it has, right? Like the wall, decide what to yeah, do. We need to, we need to know what the wall design is before we make a decision. Okay. okay. Yeah. So In the meantime, don't the glue astroturf. Don't glue on. astroturf to the porch floors. <laughs> um, you know, don't do that. Uh, don't do that while we're while we're still making this. No further astroturf installation, please. Other than this area. Okay. All right. Is there anything else on this project, then? I don't think so. And we'll try to get that sorted out and sent to y'all in a letter. All right. <laughs> Thank you. The minutes have been. Um, Jake. One more. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Jake. Jake, I'm sorry. What? Ha! Okay. Good evening. My name is Jake Johnson. Uh, I live at 609 Martha Street. We are proposing to add a 12 by 15 addition to the back side of the house. It matches the existing open-ended gable uh, on the back side of the house. We also plan to build a roof over part of a, an existing porch. Uh, I have some existing elevations as well as a floor plan shown. It'll be five columns. Uh, the proposing exposed rafter tails and the rafter tails cut matches the corbels in the front and the perimeter of the house. Is there any parking or astroturf we have to deal with? <laughs> There's no astroturf. <laughs> I love it. Sounds good. Looks good. Fe feels good. Yeah. 
This is all going to be in the rear. All in the rear. Jake, I think they're just horrible drawings. I greatly <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate that. Just have to throw that out there. No. I can't figure out what's going on. Let's not make them do it again. What, did you do the drawings? No. No. Drawings. Well, actual historic preservation guidance is that you should probably not reproduce details like your corbels but I don't think anybody would object. But if you wanted to leave them off and save the books, sure. you could do that too. Okay. So basically, we're extending the gable out and mm -hmm. then we're adding a porch. That's right. All right. It looks good to me. The porch floor exists. We're just putting a roof over it. So. Um, any further comments? Any comments from the neighborhood? Then a motion. I move to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Go. Bye -bye. Do good work. Thank you very much. The minutes of the previous meeting were mailed out. I have reviewed them. If, any, has every, if everyone else has reviewed them, then let's um, vote on their approval as mailed. Move to approve as written. Second. Second. All, all in favor? Thank you. So, dismiss.